Hello, Victor here. In this short tutorial, I am going to give you an example on how to create a text masking animation like this one. So far, I got all my tutorial ideas during the process of creating my templates inside Create Studio Pro, templates that I publish and sell on my template marketplace. If you'd like to check the template marketplace and see if you like any of them, I'll leave a link in the description below. This is a rather fresh and new channel, having only 104 subscribers when recording this and there are little to no comments requesting for tutorials. So, to help me grow my channel and to help you with more tips and tricks for Create Studio Pro, please leave your tutorial suggestions in the comments below and I'll try to make the next video tutorial according to your requests. So, let's mask a text or two. First, let me show you what you will be able to create if you stick to the very end of this tutorial. A very nice text effect that you could use in different kind of projects. Now, let's delete this group and start from scratch. So, first thing I gonna do, I will go here to my shape menu to bring in a square and I will make sure it will fit this vertical canvas. Once I've got the square to fit the canvas, I will make a copy of it and I will rename the first one below. I want to change its color, so I will go over here to color in settings and I will go ahead and choose this black color. So if I drag this one on top, you can see that the one below is black. This one above I'll leave it blue and I will rename it mask video. I will extend this to a little bit here on the timeline. Now. The blue square above, I want it to be bigger and to do that I will go here to settings and for scale I'll just type in 120. And I will also want to have some rounded corners, so I will grab this handle here and drag it inside a little bit to get those rounded corners I want. Next. I will add an animation for this blue square. I will select position, scale and border and for easing I will choose expo. Now, this is the size of this square for the starting point of the animation. And for the end point, I will move the playhead over here on the last keyframe of the animation. And I will set the scale value down to 85. I will also move the square over here to the top. And I also need to adjust the corners to be as I want them to be at the end point of this animation. Once I've got this square animated, which will serve me as a mask for a video, I will need a video file. So let's go here to media and to my files. I already have here a video file that I want to use, so I'll just bring it here on the canvas. I will trim the video to fit my other elements on the timeline and I will rename this one Replace Video. Next, I will select both the video and the blue square and I will mask the video with the blue square. Now, if I play the playhead, you can see that all the elements scale down and I don't want that. So I will go here to settings and I will switch on detach mask. Now, if I play this once again, you can see that only the mask is being animated. 
Next, I will need a text element, so I will just go up here and bring in a text. Let's type in some text to look good. Once I get my text, let's wrap the text by selecting this T letter in a box so I can easily change the line spacing by dragging this bottom edge of the text. Let me just make this text bigger and center it. I will make a copy of this text. You can see that I do have two text elements here on the timeline. The one on top, I will bring it here on the side for a little bit, just to be able to work on the one below. In settings, I will go to border and I will set a white color for the border and with a value of 5. Once I have the border settings done, I will go here to the fill color and I will bring the opacity all the way down to get this transparent text effect with a white border. Now, for the text on the top, I want to add an animation. So, I will go over here to Motion and under In section, I will select Scale Up and I will choose to animate by letters. Both text elements will be masked and we'll get to do that part shortly. But because I have an animation added on this top text element, I will need to group it if I want to be able to apply a mask to that text. I will rename it Text Group. Next, I will bring in a rectangle to create the red line that slides over the text. I want to resize it a little bit to make it like a line. I can manually adjust it by dragging the rectangle edges or by just typing in the values in the scale settings. Let me just position this line to be centered and go to color and make it red. Once I'm done with the red line, I will bring in another rectangle from the shape menu to create a mask for the transparent text with a white border. I need to make sure that the edge of this rectangle is parallel aligned with the red line and once I have it aligned with the red line, I can scale it up. To check if everything is perfectly aligned, I will zoom in and make a double check. It looks like everything is perfect, so I will go on and duplicate this rectangle and I will drag it right here. Let's rename these two rectangles just to stay organized. Before masking a text with a rectangle, I need to animate these rectangles first. So, for each of these rectangles I will add a custom animation. I am starting with this one right here on the right. For easing I will choose Expo and I'll choose a position animation. Having my playhead on the first keyframe of the animation, I need to bring the rectangle right here down to the right. And if I move the playhead on the last keyframe that represents the end point of the animation, I have my rectangle close attached back to the red line. I also want the red line to come in from this lower right corner, where the mask 1 is right now. To do that I'll just repeat the same animation settings. So having my playhead over the first keyframe, that means the starting point of the animation, I will bring the red line right next to mask 1. You can see that the animation is taking effect. Moving on to the last rectangle, mask 2, and let's add the same custom animation. Select Expo Easing and Position. And with the playhead on the first keyframe, let's bring the rectangle right here next to the red line. Now, keep in mind that this rectangle will mask the white fill text, so you might want to make sure you have the text below all covered by this rectangle. 
I zoom in to check and make sure the edges of those three elements are tied together and there is no space between them. Once I have both rectangles and the red line animated, I will go and select the text on the bottom, the transparent one with the white border, and mask it with mask1. Now let me just remove the excess tracks and let's mask the other text element. This one I will mask with mask2. Now if I move the playhead you will notice that everything is moving during the animation and this is not what I want. So to keep the text in place I will just need to select it and switch on detach mask. I will do the same for the other text element. And now I have the effect I wanted. If I zoom in and I move the playhead slowly, you can see that due to the scale up animation applied on the white text, the effect on the screen is disproportionate when the red line uncover the transparent text with a white border. To fix that, I only need to move the custom animation right after the motion preset scale up animation of the white text. Let's see how it looks. Pretty cool, I'd say. Now, if you need to edit the text later, it is better to only go in one place and change the text once for both text elements. To do that, we just need to select the two text elements on the timeline, group them together, let's also rename it just to stay organized, I'll call it text group. We go here to this gear icon and by doing so we get this easy edit properties menu and we just need to connect these two text elements. So next time when we need to change a word or the entire text, we just need to change it in only one place. Let's extend these two elements here to fit the length of the background and the video below. If you get this shaded portion on a group, you just need to go inside the group and extend the elements from within that group to fit the final length of the group. Now, let's group everything together in a master group, get rid of the excess tracks and we're done. Let's have a look to see how it plays. Pretty cool, no? If you find this tutorial helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe and click that notification bell to be notified for the upcoming tutorials on my channel. As always, thank you for watching. And if you need some ready-made templates for any of your video projects to customize yourself inside Create Studio Pro, make sure to check out the template marketplace. You might find there a template that you really like. Until next time, have fun creating!